in his last ditch effort with Ferrari with the fact that he knows he will no longer be in the car. He knows it's going to be a weird season. And I think when Sebastian Vettel has his backup and when he just doesn't care, about, he's not going to care about team orders. He's just going to drive that car as fast as he can. I think Vettel, with a chip on his shoulder, is going to win the 2020 World Drivers Championship. Yeah, I, I admit, that was a pretty hot take at the beginning of the season predicting him to win, so it's not looking too good for me right now, but I have to I have to stick with it. It was, a, it was a public opinion. I can't go back on it now, so Vettel 2020. Oh, gosh. So yes, we are back for yet another video this week. Hope you guys are all doing well wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to the channel. And this week we're going to be doing another video installment of the Legendary Driver Best Livery Series. I need a better name for that. Uh, but this week I'm not doing a quote, you know, traditional Legendary Driver. But it's someone who's being talked about a lot recently and it seems like could be out of the sport very soon. Mr. Sergio Checo Perez. Lots of talks right now about Seb taking over his seat for Aston Martin Racing in 2021. Not really happy about that. It's going to be a bit of a, a Nico Hulkenberg-like exit for Sergio Perez if he ends up going out of the sport. I'll be very sad. I'm sure lots of you will be very sad knowing that it's Lance Stroll keeping the seat that he could have. So if you haven't seen my two previous videos in this same format for Ayrton Senna and Michael Schumacher, I'll recommend you go give them a watch. I'll leave them linked in the card up above. But if you're unfamiliar with the format, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to go through chronologically each of Checo's liveries that he's raced under for his entire career, from the first to the last. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my number one, my top dog, livery and actually new for this video I'm going to give you my least favorite as well for me it's very obvious but you're going to have to find that out later so let's get into it right now so as per customary with this series we're going to be starting out with some quick facts on our guy Sergio Perez he is from Guadalajara Mexico he started in 178 Formula 1 Grand Prix to this date eight podiums and 597 total career points He's driven for Sauber, McLaren, Mercedes, Force India, and Racing Point. So a few liveries to go through, lots to get through here, and some ugliness to look at in the future. Warning you now, get your, get your ugly livery goggles on because it's, it's going to get pretty rough. Let's get into it. So to start things off, Perez started his career with Sauber in 2011 with the Sauber C31. Really good looking car, to be completely honest with you. I like the color scheme. The, the design is very flowing with the car. And you guys know I like designs that flow with the car. Then in 2012, there was a bit of a step back there with the more angular looks to the, to, the, to the design. I'm really not a huge fan of that. I don't hate it. It's not the worst thing I've seen in the world. But it's, it's definitely a step back from 2011. That 2011 car, honestly, kind of rate it. I'm, I'm pretty into it. It looks very motorsport manager-y, but... I'm, I'm fine with it. And now we have the most unfortunate part of Sergio Perez's career, uh, going to McLaren Mercedes just for the one year after moving up from Sauber. Uh, he was just too young. He wasn't able to perform as consistently as he was to today. So he wasn't able to stay with Sauber for past that one year in 2013. But the MP4 28 is a mwah beautiful car. I think we all miss the Vodachrome liveries of the past. They are so good looking, so sleek, and they look like spaceships, like Formula One cars are meant to look like. They just look so good. And honestly, I found that back in the day of the very elongated cars with the tall rear wings, McLaren had the best looking cars of the bunch. They really know how to make a good looking livery. And yeah, it is, it is a great looking car. Perez, be thankful you got to drive a Vodachrome because they are Magnifico. So now we are at a stage in Perez's career where things get a bit dicey, both in terms of the way that the liveries look, but also in the naming of the team he has driven for. Yes, he has driven for one team since 2014. Six years, 
one team. But the problem is, is that one team has had multiple different names. Just going through the list, which started out as Sahara Force India F1 team, then moved on to Racing Point Force India F1 team, then Sport Pesa Racing Point F1 team, now BWT Racing Point F1 team, and if he stays next year and Vettel doesn't take his seat, it will then be Aston Martin Racing. I'm, I'm out of, I think you're out of breath. I'm out of breath. Lots of names for the same team. We're going to go through all of them because the liveries change like nothing has ever changed in its life before. So let's just, let's, let's buckle down and get into this one. So now that we all understand somehow how the naming scheme of this team works, we can look at some liveries. Why don't we? So 2014, the Sahara Force India VJM07. Um, is a fine car. I will say, for all of the Sahara rendition of the Force India liveries, I'm not a huge fan of the color green in general. I'm, I'm just not a green guy. So on a racing car, it doesn't look too good to me. But one thing I do like that they did with this year's car was the white. The white, orange, green, and black is my favorite color combination for this rendition of the team. Looks really good, actually. I love the white. I think, in my opinion, it's the best-looking livery of these few and now this is when they start to go a bit downhill. We're starting good. We're starting, you know, decent, but it's it's going to go downhill. Let's let's uh, let's go to 2015. So in 2015, Sahara Force India changed it up with the VJM08, bringing in gray instead of white, not even a gray, like a very dark silver almost. I am not a fan of these liveries. Honestly, these were some of my least favorite liveries back in this era of F1. I didn't like the orange and the green before, but it was the white that saved it. But then they brought in the gray, and it just does not look nice to me. I've never been a fan of it. And then 2015 and 2016, very similar cars. They're both not good looking at all to me. But definitely of those few Force Indias that he drove for, the first one in 2014 with the white did it for me. And then 2017 rolled around where they went from a super dark, boring, mundane livery of the old Sahara Force India cars, and then BWT, which literally stands for Best Water Technology, came along and sponsored Force India, and now we changed to the Pink Panther. We went from the darkest car on the grid to, to pink, because that's just what happened. Um, I love this rendition of the Pink Panther. I love the bubbles. I kind of miss the bubbles of the 2017 car. It's also a bit of a paler pink, which I think looks really nice. Um, but yeah, very, very big shift in terms of livery design. But honestly, I did not mind this car. Definitely what I, I, I enjoyed it much more than the, than the dark gray, black, orange, and green. Yikes. So then we have the final year of Force India. Really doesn't look like anything what the original Force Indias looked like now. It is completely decked out in the pink. In 2018, we had the VJM11 looking super pink, much, much more of a neon full pastel -y pink in the 2018 car. Gone are the bubbles, in are the color blocking. I do not like this car as much as I did the 2017 car. There's too many lines going on all over the place on it. I don't like the color blocking on the front nose. Does not look good to me, but I do like this shade of pink quite a bit. But less color blocking definitely could have saved this livery for me, but I did appreciate the pink sticking out on the grid. Looked good. And then, and then, and then, we move to Racing Point. The team is no longer Force India. It is now fully Racing Point, but with that added Sport Pesa at the beginning of it for just the one year Sport Pesa, which I believe is a uh, sports fantasy gambling online website, um, sponsored the team for one year and clearly wanted a very large portion of the car to be painted in the Sport Pesa colors. And then it just, it's a very similar initial livery. Like if you take off the Sport Pesa part of this car, it looks like the 2018 livery, but then they just slapped it on. They slapped on this bulge of blue with Sport Pesa in the top left. Why not fill the whole thing up with Sport Pesa? This is an absolutely horrendous car. I do not understand who designed it, why they went with this kind of design. It is absolutely atrocious. It, it just looks extremely rushed, and I am not a fan whatsoever. 
this this is gonna go in the bin for me. This is horrible. And then 2020 comes along, we have the RP20. Now, if you watched my 2020 uh, ranked liveries video, you'll know that I put this last. I do think it's an ugly livery by far. I hate the fact that it has that diagonal BWT logo slapped across the side. I think it looks horrible. Uh, but that being said, I do not think it is as bad as that 2019 car. That 2019 car is one of my least favorite in, you know, the last couple decades. It is absolutely atrocious. That being said, I do not think the 2020 is any better. I think it's still a bad looking car, but it's definitely, you know, kind of a, I guess you could call it like a, a slight sidestep up to the 2019 car, but yeah, definitely not not a looker whatsoever. Also, I, I tweeted this out, um, I think in the first Austrian Grand Prix, the, the TKM view from the halo on this car is, is just extremely jarring. You've got JCB and BWT just slapping you in the face with their advertisements. Uh, it is a horrifying cockpit view. I, I do not like it at all. So now we're in a place. We've put all the liveries behind us, all the bad ones, all the good ones, but they're all behind us now. We can look at the two that I put at the top and the bottom. Obviously, if you've watched this entire video in its entirety and you've paid attention to how I've explained these liveries, you probably already know what I'm going to say. But my least favorite livery by far is the RP19. It is an absolutely disgusting car. One of my least favorites of the last couple decades, if I'm being completely honest with you. That that splotch of blue with Sport Pesa just slapped in the top left corner looks absolutely atrocious. I am not a fan of it whatsoever, but that's okay. We can put it in the bin. We can forget about it and just look and marvel at the 2013 McLaren Mercedes MP4 28. The Vodachrome will always stand tall and true to being an absolutely stunning livery. No matter what car you put it on, it is absolutely beautiful to look at and is by far Sergio Perez's best looking livery he has ever driven to date. And hopefully, Hopefully he has more, but I'm starting to think he's not going to. So there it is. Sergio Perez's best and worst liveries of his career. I hope this is not an in-memoriam video for Perez's career in Formula 1. I hope by the time this video comes out, there's no more news on the fact that he's lost his seat. We'll keep our fingers crossed and our minds hopeful that Perez continues to race in Formula 1, even if it's at a lower-end team. I think we'd all be pretty gutted to see him leave the sport. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to lick the stamp, send that subscribe button down below, and feel free to drop a comment. Let me know if I'm wrong, if I'm right, what you thought Perez's best and worst liveries have been of his entire career. Don't miss the apex, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.